Hi, and welcome back to Art by Wendy Studio. Today, I want to talk to you about painting mossy rocks. Well, actually, here on the West Coast, we have mossy rocks, mossy logs, mossy stumps, mossy fences, lots of moss everywhere. So it's really useful to be able to produce a nice, fluffy, mossy look. Now to start off with, I'd like to take a look first at your drawing. Here is when we can begin to establish what um, is mossy and what isn't. In this case here, I have a large mossy rock that I've drawn. And then notice that there are other rocks that have no moss on them. So we get that contrast between the, the, the two shapes. Also, if you take a look at the line, notice where the edge is smooth, where the rock it, it has no moss, and then here the rock becomes mossy, and we can tell that by the edge. Looking at the other rocks, you can see that they are all smooth, and our eye knows they do not have moss on them. Then take a look at all the little lumps and bumps on this rock and the shadows. Again, this gives the eye the, the um, idea that there is something there. It is not a smooth rock. Now, along with texture, we, uh, sorry, along with the drawing, we need to think about the color. And here I have uh, some of the colors that I put together, and I'm sure you all have your own colors that you like to use for making your greens. Uh, I have a cold yellows, warm yellows, and the two main um, greens that I use are the cobalt blue, teal blue, and the hooker green. And you can see the colors that I mix with them. And that gives you quite a range of greens to use with your moss. I've done a video on painting nature's greens and have a look at it and it'll give you some more ideas as well for mixing your greens. Now, just having a variety of different greens isn't enough when you're painting moss and in fact any of nature in itself. I know there's a lot of green out there, but there's also some other colors out there that need to be included in your drawing of your moss. So let's go back to the initial drawing that we're going to do. Here is our, um, here is some mossy covered rocks that I've already painted. Notice some of the other colors that are there. Notice there's a bit of pink, a bit of yellow, a bit of orange, and take a look at the shadows as well. It's not good enough just to do a darker green. Notice there's different blues in there. There's, and I like to use purple. Other people use other colors for their shadows. But um, notice the changes of those shadows and the shadow colors and the range of colors that are there. These are things you need to think about when you're doing your moss. Okay, let's go back to our nice little mossy rock and get started. And as I uh, do a quick painting of this rock, Watch and see the layers that are used, because now we're going to look at texture. Another important thing in making that mossy rock look mossy. Okay, well I finished uh, painting my mossy rock here, and uh, now I, I want like to just kind of go over some of the things that I did to make this look like it's moss and this part smooth. So the first thing, of course, I talked about before in the drawing process was that edge. The second thing we talked about, I talked about colors. And you can see how the colors take, create a rounded effect. Also, notice the um, texture and the shadows that have been added by making it look puffy. The contrast between here, the smooth rock, and then here, the puffiness with the different colors uh, and values uh, and getting different depths, suggesting different depths. And, uh, and then the, um, the texture that those colors also simulate. Um, particularly here, uh, look at this transition that's going on here. There's the, there's the orange that I talked about, there's some green and things like that. Here we have a little bit of red, orange, a couple of different kinds of greens, and a yellow. 
And all those things create that puffiness that builds up the values, that gives the impression to the eye that it's not flat, like this area here, but instead it is curved and has some depth to it. So now uh, I also have some other examples here to show you. Um, this I thought turned out really well. I was really pleased with, with this particular drawing. Look at this rock here. I mean, that really gives you a sense of that puffiness of the moss here, and we have the things coming out of it. And even this part here, again, the smoothness of these rocks gives us the contrast. We have the difference in values. We have the difference in color. And we have the shadows that are on the edges to show us that the, the moss is curled around and down into this darkness. And as I mentioned before, it's not just rocks that are mossy here. Here's an example of a tree. Very common sight that we would see here is the moss covered tree with the moss down below it. And again, you can see all of the things I talk about. <coughs> if you notice, here's that edge that has that bumpiness to us that tells us this is bumpy. We have the difference in values. We have the shadows, we have the texture. And one of the things too, as I mentioned earlier on, was the changes of color. Moss is not just green, green, and green. And notice the different colors I have in here, some reds, I have some oranges, I have different shades and, and hot and cold greens, uh, some browns. All of that helps to give us that sense of, of the puffiness again. So, have fun doing your mossy rocks and don't forget it can be a log, a tree, a fence, um, anything, wherever we get lots of, of rain, we have moss. And think about your edges, the colors that you're using, your texture and your shadows and have fun with some of that outdoor sketching. Wendy teaches outdoor sketching classes in the summer, and she teaches in her studio and online throughout the year. Wendy produces original work in pencil and in watercolor. She completes commission work, particularly pet portraits, and produces cards and prints from some of her work.